So what's up guys, my name is Ash and welcome back to a brand new video. In today's video guys, I've got some custom tactics and player instructions for one of the rattiest and most popular formations in FIFA 23, this being the 5-4-1. Now just before we get started guys, I would very much appreciate it if you could drop this uh, video a thumbs up as it does really help me out. Also subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications will also really help me out uh, and help keep you guys posted for whenever I do upload a video. And with all that aside guys, let's get right into today's video. If you want some coins for the new level up promo, make sure you check out MMOXP.com. Their link is down in the description. They're very fast, they're very cheap, they're very reliable, and if you use my code REMA, you can get yourself a nice 5% extra discount. Okay then guys, so starting off with the custom tactics, for the defensive style, as always, I like to have this on balance, guys. Now the reason we have this on balanced is because it does give us the best control over our defenders. So when we want to press our opponent and be a bit more aggressive we are able to do that and then when we want to drop back be a little bit more passive we are also able to do that so it does give us the best control uh, and balanced defense which is super important if you want to be a good player in this game that being said if you want to use the pressure tactics because you feel more comfortable that is also fine now moving on to the defensive width guys, I have this on 38. Now the reason I have it on 38 is so we primarily keep a nice narrow and compact defense. Basically this makes it very difficult for our opponent to just run right through the middle of us and it stops us leaving so many gaps because our players aren't as spread out. So it does make it very easy to defend in my opinion. The reason we don't lower the width any more than this though is because it is still important to maintain some a bit, uh, a bit of the natural width of the formation to cover the wide areas in case an opponent tries an attack down the wing. So we want to be narrow, but not too narrow at the same time. Now moving on to the depth, guys, I have this on 55 for this formation. The reason for this is I find it to be a really balanced depth. So we're not always like pressing super high up the pitch with a crazy high defensive line. Uh, and on the flip side, we're not always sitting super deep either. So I don't like having a really low defensive line or a really low depth because I don't like the feeling of getting picked back in my own half all the time uh, but at the same time I also don't like having it really high because although you can win the ball higher at the pitch uh, you do get cat, uh, caught out a lot with through balls as well so I like to go for something in between moving on to the build up play guys I have this on balanced now the reason I have this on balanced is because it's the most consistent and varied form of build up in the game when you use balance you can pick and choose when and where you use each form of build up such as slow build up or fast build up so you really do have the control uh, to pick and choose when you want to use each style but for example if you use something like slow build up you're always restricted to playing slowly you can't randomly decide to speed up the same way if you use fast build up you always have to play quickly and you can't slow down so balance allows you to pick and choose when and where you use each form of build up now moving on to chance creation guys, I like to have this on direct passing. This is because I find it to be by far the most meta option in the game. When you use direct passing, your attacking players will bunch up against the opposition defenders, like they'll back into them, making it very easy to ping a pass into that player. From there you can do the very overpowered 1v1 plays and beat your opponent with a skill, and then it's very easy to create chances from there. Players will also make the extra movements when you're in the penalty box so you can get off the extra pass or the sweat to guarantee that goal instead of taking a chance and risking the goalkeeper saving a shot moving on to the width guys i have this on 43 the reason for this is the 541 obviously has a bit of width to it so we don't want to make it something it's not and make it really really narrow but on the flip side we don't want to make it too wide otherwise your players are just too far apart from each other and it actually makes it really difficult to attack so we want to have some width but we don't want to be too wide at the same time so just pick somewhere from like 40 to 50 and I think you'll be all right to be honest with you now moving on to players in box guys I have this on four this is so we can get a few players into the box to create those chances of course but we don't overcommit everyone on the team to the point where we're always getting counter-attacked and as for corners and free kicks guys I have these both on one because there's a set piece routine that I use which requires these to be on one link to that in the top right hand corner of the screen if you are interested now moving on to the player instructions guys 
on the striker, I like to have him on stay central and get in behind. Now, the reason we have him on stay central is because he is our striker, so we don't want him drifting off into those wider areas all the time. So we want him to primarily stay in those central positions, which is what he'll do on this instruction. So we always know where our striker is going to be, and it makes him a lot more reliable because of that. We also have him on getting behind as opposed to mixed attack, because on getting behind, he'll always make those darting runs in behind uh, to give you the most chances possible. Now, if you're playing against somebody that is really good defensively and they're constantly reading that through ball to the striker who's running in behind, you can switch this up to mixed attack and they'll make more versatile runs. Sometimes they'll come short so they can receive the ball there and it might help you attack that way. That's what I do anyway. When I'm playing against a good opponent, mixed attack helps me out a lot more. Now moving on to the right mid and the left mid guys, I have them both on comeback on defense, cut inside, get in behind and then we leave them alone. We have them on comeback on defense so we always ensure that they keep the correct defensive position. If we leave them on basic defensive support, sometimes these players can be very lazy and leave gaps especially in these wide areas which makes it very easy for your opponent to take control of the game but when you put them on comeback on defense it ensures that they keep a nice uh, compact shape and they do to fill in the correct position. We have them on cut inside, so they're always looking to make those narrow runs inwards to get near the goal. It also helps you link up with the striker because if you look at the formation uh, just as a default, you'll see the striker doesn't really have that much support. So it actually helps to put these players on cut inside as they'll make those diagonal runs near the striker to help them out uh, and assist them. So it is actually very effective. We also have them on getting behind, so they're always looking to make those darting runs and they're not too static. Uh, moving on to the left centre mid guys, the more defensive minded midfielder in my case, I have him on stay back while attacking and cover centre. We have him on stay back while attacking so he always stays back, he's like a really defensive player for me so I don't want this player going forward. Then we also have him on cover centre so he does defend those central areas. Now for the right centre mid where I use a more box to box style player, we have him on the default settings and cover centre. We have him on the default settings because he's a box to box so he's got a bit of a free roll in this team uh, so we kind of just leave him alone there the only important thing is that we have him on cover center so he does defend those central areas now moving on to the wing backs guys, very important. We have them on join the attack and overlap. We have them on join the attack so they're not scared to go forward. They will assist us when we are attacking. Super important in my opinion to use the wing backs when you are attacking. And then most importantly as well, we have them on the overlap run type so they'll make the overlapping runs to add width to your attack. This is super important because like I said with the right mid and the left mid, we have these players on the cut inside instruction which means they're gonna be making the inverted runs to run into those narrow spaces leaving gaps for these wing wing backs to overlap and then add the width to the attack so we've got players in the narrow areas and the wide areas at the same time making it very difficult for your opponent to defend those attacks as for the three center backs guys and the goalkeeper I leave them alone you can do whatever you want though uh, but yeah I just leave them alone and that is it but yeah guys they're my custom tactics and player instructions for the 541 if you have enjoyed or found this useful please be sure to drop this a like, sub to the channel if you are new and don't forget to turn on notifications. And with all that aside guys, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace out guys, I love you lots.